Right, so this is just a quick introduction to my uh, Swift tutorial, and I'm actually going to number my tutorials. I'm thinking that this tutorial is probably just going to be a basic tutorial on Swift, um, but it might develop into something more. Anyway, we're going to start with the uh, level. So there's going to be three numbers. So the first video will be 1.1.1, 1 .1 .1, okay? Don't know what all this is so ignore that and the first one is going to represent the level of skill required to uh, un understand these videos so number one will be for basic videos number two will be for intermediate if i do intermediate and number three will be for advanced concepts so we're starting on number one for example 2.1.1 would be uh, intermediate videos and number three would be advanced videos okay so we'll start at 1.1.1 the second uh, thing here is the concept okay so let's say um the first concept we'll call concept number one which is actually going to be the introduction and print statements okay concept two will probably be variables or data types or something so concept one would be this right this is the first concept is print so print is going to be in a base it's a basic concept so it's going to be in the basics videos and it's going to be the first concept in the basic series okay if i was looking at the second concept it would be basic series second concept like this okay and this number here represents the number uh in 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 that concept okay so for example basics number this shows basics that this is the basic tutorial because of the number the first number is the level of the tutorial this would show that we're on concept number one and this would show that we're in video number one of concept number one for for example i may do a second video which might be a practice video so second video of the first concept might be a practice of the first concept or it could be i don't know just that concept in more depth and the third video might be the practice, for example, okay? So let's say video 3.1.5, okay? This would be an advanced, the advanced tutorial. This first number would signify that this is the highest level tutorial. The second number would say show that this is the first concept uh, within this level of tutorial. And this would say that this is the fifth video of this concept, okay? and that's more or less the code but i think there's a possibility i might only do basics and i may do some intermediate and i probably won't do expert level right that's as much as i'll give you now i'm not going to teach you what technologies you need to use uh, essentially in order to write in swift or i'm not i'm not going to download them certainly I'll show you a few, I will show you some of the technologies, but I'm not really going to get into how to use them so much. So I'm actually programming in Windows, so I need to download something called Swift for Windows in order to run Swift code in uh, this compiler. And I actually write my Swift in Notepad++, so Notepad++, there we are. So you can download this if you want to run in Windows and if you want to have your own files, blah, blah, blah. Okay. The uh, other thing I use is Online Swift Playground, which I'll be using for all the tutorials, actually. And yeah, I'll, I'll just use this for the tutorials. But I'll actually be making... Um, the the actual files in notepad plus plus and at, at the end of you know a tutorial i'll actually have the file available on my github for people to go through so if you want to look at a file that i've made and you want to see in more detail because i put like remarks inside of the file or try and run the file yourself you'll have the file to uh, run if you go on my github the other thing is if you're on ios or Apple or, or, or whatever, if you're on another device that isn't Windows or Linux, um, you should actually be able to download something called Xcode, which I think requires you to have an Apple uh, account. But you can use Xcode uh, to actually make Swift, Swift code with. Okay. 
So simple enough. That's all you got to do in order to uh, run Swift code. I'm actually going to go into Notepad now. You can't see it because it's off screen, but I'm going to go into it. And here, this is essentially me copying into Notepad this here. Import foundation, print hello world. Okay. And now all I've got to do with that is select the compiler file here. Recursion, print, whatever. Okay, so we'll select print, we'll compile it, and we run it here. Okay, takes a bit of time. Takes a bit of time. Windows isn't great at compiling this kind of code. Um, and that's that's as far as I'll go with that, essentially. Right, let's get into it. So what we want to start off with is this here, print. Okay, now... This just essentially prints something to screen. So if I run this code, we see the text, hello world. If I change the text inside of this parenthesis to, I don't know, something else. In fact, let's let's put another print statement. We'll, uh, we'll print P. We'll see that this now prints P in addition to that, okay? Now, we can actually use these print statements to, well, to make pretty patterns. So inside of this uh, parentheses, in order to type out a string, which we'll get into that later, I have to put a space in here and then a P. If I print here and I put two spaces in here and a P and I print here, and then I go back to one space in a P and I print here and I go back to a singular P character. If I print all that, you'll see that I make a little shape with the uh, with the letters there. You see that little triangular shape? It's not the best represented by um, Swift for Windows. So I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll, uh, I'll copy and paste this. Okay. Oh, I won't well, let me do that. Well, I'll just I'll just do it again. I'll just print the statement. I'll put one P and then I'll print again. And what I'll do is I'll use two spaces and a P here. On the next print statement, I'll use four spaces and a P just to kind of make it more noticeable, you know, the spacing. Okay. And then I use two spaces and the P once again here. And I use one space. No spaces in a P, sorry. And you'll see we've printed out a slightly more pronounced triangle shape there than before. This didn't really represent so well in the output. Okay. What can you use this print statement for? Well, it's a good way to just practice uh, coding, essentially. It's also a way of when you get into coding more to check for errors or to check how the code's working in a sense it can tell you some things about the code which i'll explain in in, in further le lessons further tutorials but for now just understand that it's quite useful uh, to have this print function to know this print function now notice that all it is is the word print two parentheses and you can put something inside of this print. It doesn't have to have these quotations. That's just if you want uh, characters, if you want to print characters. I can also print numbers like 45. Um, I can print the number 900, for example. There are many things I can print, which I'll get into later. Okay, so if we look down here, we've got 45 and 900. Now, whenever you program anything you know it doesn't have to be swift code it can be any code if you put for example print with a capital p oh, it might actually work on this i'm not sure it might work i'm going to try it no so you see how it's come up with an error and the reason why it's come up with an error is because as far as a human is concerned there's not very much difference between the word print with a lowercase p and the word print with an uppercase p okay for a computer however this will cause an error because these are two completely different things and the correct way to use this function is 
lowercase. So if you spell it with an uppercase, it won't work. Similarly, um, I'll put this before here. If I put print correctly and I just have that with one parenthesis and not a closing parenthesis, the print won't work. You see how I've got an error there and an error there. So in order to not have these errors, we can either complete the function like this or revert back to non capitals. I'll keep them as capitals for now, just so you can uh, just so you can kind of look at those errors yourself when it comes to running that code. And that really is all there is to do uh, with print. Essentially, that's all that print is used for. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed it and thanks for watching.